Well hello everybody and welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Now today I'm going to be making uh, something which I'm going to call uh, fig and date bundles. Uh, these are for Christmas as an alternative uh, to mince pies, um, just something slightly different. Now I thought about making something different to mince pies and I had a look around on the internet and I found this particular recipe which I thought looked very good on Better Homes and Gardens where they called it Italian Fig Bundles. I've changed the name to Fig and Date simply because there seems to be almost an equal amount of dates to figs in the recipe. Now I should say you could vary the filling. You could use dried apricots and hazelnuts instead of uh, figs or dates and pine nuts and such like. But I'll go through the recipe. Um, just want to let you know you can put whatever filling you want in as long as it's not too wet basically. Um, and so the idea is that we make some pastry and we roll it out and we cut it into shapes and then on half of the shapes we put our filling and, on, and then we top them with the other half of the shapes which have got a cross cut into them so that they open up um, to display the filling basically. Um, they look quite good as I say and so for the ingredients for the filling I have uh, half a teaspoon of cinnamon and uh, 45 millilitres, three tablespoons of orange juice. Then I have here 42 grams or a quarter of a cup, sorry, a third of a cup of pine nuts, uh, 35 grams, a quarter of a cup of raisins, about a teaspoon of orange zest, um, two thirds of a cup of pitted dates which I've chopped um, and that is 110 grams. I have 130 grams, which is another two thirds of a cup of chopped uh, dried dates, minus soft dried dates. So I'm just going to put those all to one side for a minute to go on to uh, the dough. And for the dough, I have here 480 grams of plain flour. That's three and three quarter cups. I have uh, two, uh, sorry, I have a tablespoon of baking powder which I'm going to put into the flour straight away. Um, then I have uh, a quarter of a cup, 60 millilitres of milk, half a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, 150 grams of caster sugar or granulated sugar, that's three quarters of a cup. I have one medium egg, that would be large in the USA, and I have 170 grams of softened butter, that would be three quarters of a cup. So. What I'm going to do is um, put some to the side and I'm going to start off by creaming the butter. And this is actually very soft I think, but it's fine. I'm just going to give that a bit of a a mix with the um, hand mixer. That was very quick, um, just to loosen the butter up. And into that I'm going to put the sugar and I'm going to add the salt at this stage. I'm going to mix that together. And then I'm going to add in the egg and the milk. and the vanilla extract. And I'm going to mix all of those until they're combined. Okay, and so then I'm going to add uh, the flour and the baking powder. And I'm actually going to um, 
stir the baking powder round into some of the flour so that we get it mixed quite nicely. Now as you mix this, if it's um, getting too stiff then you can finish off uh, doing it by hand. So we just start on slow and then speed up. Okay, so then uh, the next thing to do is actually to chill that dough in the fridge for about 30 minutes. Um, but what you want to do is uh, divide it into four equal sized portions when you chill it so that you can work with each one individually. Now I'm just going to the bottom of the bowl here to get any um, dry bits that haven't been incorporated into the dough. And that's it. So as I say, I'm going to divide that into four and chill it for 30 minutes. And while it's chilling, we'll go on and make our filling. So um, what we need to do is to mix all our filling ingredients together and process them in a food processor. Now, I've actually decided that my little immersion uh, blender does a perfect job at uh, chopping and mincing these things. Um, so I'm going to do it in that, but I'm going to do it in two parts uh, so that I don't overfill the bowl. It's just uh, easier than getting out the food processor and all the, the bits that go with that. So I put half of everything into um, the little mixer. That's half the dates, half the figs. half the pine nuts. I'm sure I could put all of them in, but um, half doing it in two stages is just as easy, I think. Um, half the raisins, half the, the zest. And then I'm going to put about half the orange juice in and half of the cinnamon powder. And process that until it's all minced up and then do the same with the other half so that's our mixture and um, it's got a, a few little chunks in it, which is fine. I'm just mixing it together because I did it in two batches and I want to make sure it's evenly mixed. So that is ready then. And so the next thing to do is to uh, roll out our pastry um, and at that stage we'll need to have our oven preheated at 180 celsius that's 160 celsius with a fan 350 fahrenheit and have some baking trays prepared with parchment paper or silicon mats ready to uh, bake the um, the bundles on so i've taken our pastry or one part of our pastry out of the fridge and I'm now going to roll that out to a thickness of about an eighth of an inch. I'm 
And with that rolled out, um, you then need to take a cutter like this. This is two and a half inches in diameter. Um, and I also have here um, one which is two inches square. And I'm going to do a mixture of both, but I'll do the one with the cookie cutter first and just cut out your rounds like that. You want to cut out an even number. I have an odd number here but I'll, I'll re-roll the pastry. And then you take them and you put them onto a baking tray. Or half of them onto a baking tray should I say. And then with the other half, you want to take um, a knife and make a, a cross in the centre of each one. And we'll just put that to the side for a minute so I can show you what we do next. You then take about a spoonful of the mixture that we made and put that in the center like that. And then I have an egg here with about a tablespoon of water and I'm just going to whisk those together and I'm going to gently brush around the edges just to wet them a little bit and then we take one of our other rounds very carefully and put it on the top like that and then press it down like that. We do that with all of them. So having rolled and filled our um, pastries what we're going to do is brush them with some of the egg wash and then sprinkle them with some um, granulated sugar. I have some, some large granules which I'm going to use. Um, if you've got large granules that would be good. because those large granules don't dissolve in quite the same way so they'll still be there when the baking's finished so we just take some sugar and sprinkle it like that And then we're going to bake these in the oven for um, 12 to 15 minutes until they've turned a nice golden colour. And then I'll take them out and let them cool down. 
on a baking jar on a wire rack and then I'll come back and show you the result. So I'll be back with you when these have baked and cooled down. Right, I'm back with you and I've taken uh, the first batch out of the oven and letting them cool down. I have another batch in the oven, um, but this is what they look like. A nice crisp sort of biscuity type um, pastry uh, with a filling inside. So I'll take a, a, a taste of one. Mm. That is very, very good indeed. Nice crisp pastry and the fruity filling. That really is very good. Um, and quite easy to make, a little bit fiddly, but quite easy to make. Certainly a very good alternative to mince pies, I would think. So that's going to be it for this recipe. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please give me the thumbs up below the video and click to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In the top right hand corner of the screen there will be an eye that you can click on to take you to the recipe and I'll put a link to it below the video as well. Um, and I will be back with you with another recipe in the very near future. So until then, happy baking.